As a young priest, Father Peter, accompanied by a physician, Dr. Nelson, step into a dimly lit chamber. There, they find Sister Magali bound to a bed, her features grotesquely altered by a demonic entity known as Balbin. Sensing the gravity of the situation, Peter is adamant that an exorcism is the only path to save her. Desperate, he reaches out to his superior, Father Michael, for his blessing to proceed. However, Father Michael, concerned about Peter's inexperience, denies his plea. Undeterred by the refusal, Peter, filled with determination, decides to carry out the exorcism on his own. Clearing the room of any distractions, Father Peter positions a camera, hoping to capture every moment of the exorcism. As he begins uttering the sacred verses, the atmosphere grows tenser, with Magali's bed levitating off the ground. Yet, her possession is so profound that the prayers seem to have no influence over her. Instead, the malevolent entity within her attempts to distract and tempt Father Peter by disrobing and trying to entice him. Peter battles his own composure while fervently continuing with his incantations. In a desperate move, he splashes holy water onto Magali, but to his dismay, it remains ineffective. Magali soon strips off and begins to enjoy herself in front of Peter. As soon as she is finished, a demonic scream can be heard, and Magali collapses on the bed. When Peter goes to check on her, Magali pushes his hand into her privates, and Peter loses all self-control and kisses her. He then tries to flee, but it appears that he is completely under demonic possession as we see his eyes having turned yellow. Time leaps forward by 18 years. The setting shifts to the cold, bleak confines of a prison where a guard is making his rounds to collect empty food plates. As he reaches into one of the cells, a sudden savage act occurs. A prisoner lunges and severs two of the guard's fingers with a brutal bite. The scene then transitions to a serene Mexican countryside where we find a much-changed Father Peter. Haunted by the past events and ridden with guilt, he's chosen a life of penance. Here, amidst the quiet, he dedicates his time to feeding the impoverished and providing a sheltering hand to orphans. While on one of his regular food distribution rounds, Father Peter is approached by a distraught mother who introduces him to her ailing son, Philippe. The boy seems to be tormented by an unfamiliar ailment. As Philippe's condition deteriorates, with violent tremors seizing his body, Peter rushes him to a nearby hospital. There, Dr. Nelson inspects Philippe and gravely informs Peter that four other children have succumbed to this mysterious disease with no identified cause or cure in sight. Later, at the church, a revelation awaits Peter. Dr. Nelson confronts him, implying that these tragic events are divine retribution for Peter's past transgressions. Although Nelson tries to reason that Peter was under possession during the sin, Peter remains convinced that he could have averted the mistake. Believing that confession might be his path to redemption, he seeks out Bishop Monsignor Balducci. As he's on the verge of presenting the tape he recorded 18 years ago as evidence of his sin, Balducci surprises him. The higher echelons of the Vatican view Peter as a saintly figure, and as a token of appreciation, Balducci hands Peter a generous check for his orphanage. The magnitude of the gesture causes Peter to hesitate in his confession. Later, alone in his room, the weight of his conscience bears down on him. He replays the haunting tape, consumed by regret for the dark choices he made all those years ago. A chilling scream echoes from the church, jolting Peter into action. Inside, he discovers that the statue of Jesus has been unsettlingly displaced. Scouring the area, he spots a figure weeping in the shadows. Drawing closer, he recoils in horror to find a malevolent version of Jesus. Just as the demonic apparition lunges at him, Peter snaps awake, the terrifying scene revealed as a mere nightmare. But reality offers little respite. A call from a prison warden interrupts the calm. There's been unusual activity with one of the inmates, and she has specifically requested Peter. With Dr. Nelson by his side, Peter confronts the prisoner, a woman named Esperanza. Her behavior eerily mirrors that of Magali from years prior, her words dripping with the same seductive malevolence. The shocking truth unfolds. Esperanza is possessed by the same demon that once plagued Magali. A further twist arrives with the entry of Magali, now revealed to be Esperanza's mother, and she drops the bombshell. Esperanza is Peter's daughter. Magali implores Peter to save their daughter, hinting it could be his ticket to redemption, yet the specters of the past refuse to let go. That night, the sinister form of Jesus returns in Peter's visions, leaving him paralyzed with fear. The somber news arrives that young Felipe has passed away, the mysterious cause of his ailment still eluding medical professionals. In the wake of this tragedy, Father Peter seeks an audience with Balducci, presenting him with the concerning report on Esperanza and pleading for his approval to conduct an exorcism. Recognizing the potential dangers and eager to avoid further calamities, Balducci consents. But this time, Peter insists on having an assistant for the rite. 
To everyone's astonishment, the globally renowned exorcist Father Michael touches down in Mexico, summoned by Father Peter. His reputation precedes him, having once successfully banished Balban. As night shrouds the landscape, a remorseful Peter sets aflame the unsettling tape from Magali's exorcism. A flashback reveals the harrowing truth. It was Peter who had been in the clutches of Balban during that fateful night. Troubled, Peter confides in Father Michael about the recurring nightmares of the malevolent Jesus. Father Michael grows increasingly concerned, deducing that Balban might be attempting to claim Peter. Meanwhile, in the hallowed sanctum of the church, Sister Camilla finds solace in her prayers to the Virgin Mary, but her peace is short-lived when drops of blood mar her tranquility. The once comforting presence of the Mother Mary statue is ominously absent. An eerie silence is punctuated by chilling sounds, leading her to discover a blood-soaked cloth on the church floor. Drawing it back, she is met with the grisly sight of a lifeless child beneath. In a chilling turn of events, the statue of the Virgin Mary begins to move, seemingly possessed by a malevolent force. Camilla, caught off guard, feels a momentary respite when the entity seems to vanish, but soon an unseen demonic power yanks her away. Now, with the spirit of the malevolent Mother Mary residing within her, Camilla looms ominously over the innocent children, her intentions nefarious. Nagali, in a desperate bid to protect them, confronts the possessed Camilla, but is swiftly overpowered. Drawn by the terrified cries of the children, Father Michael and Peter intervene just in time. With their combined efforts, they manage to extract the evil entity from Camilla. But the relief is fleeting as Peter's gaze falls upon the children, now manifesting signs of possession. As the scene shifts to the prison, the air thickens with tension. On their mission to exorcise Esperanza, fathers Michael and Peter are met with a power outage. To their dismay, Esperanza's cell is ominously empty. Concurrently, Dr. Nelson discovers that the prison's security has been compromised with all cell doors ajar. The grim discovery of the prison guard's lifeless body sends shockwaves of horror through him. Lured by the haunting cry of a girl, his guard drops, allowing another demon-infested girl to ambush him with a blade. In the labyrinth of the prison, Father Peter and Michael stumble upon an injured Dr. Nelson, now encircled by a horde of possessed female inmates. With unwavering resolve, Father Michael begins the sacred rites, hoping to liberate the prisoners from their dark captors. But the familiar verses seem powerless against the overwhelming force they face. Suddenly, the sinister visage of the possessed Mother Mary materializes before Peter, her intent malicious. The possessed inmates lunge at the priests, but in a brave act of defiance, Nelson steps between them. This selfless intervention costs him dearly as he's fatally wounded by the inmates. Seizing this moment of chaos, Father Michael and Peter retreat to a nearby room, barricading themselves from the encroaching danger. Within these confines, Michael probes Peter about the weighty secret he harbors, suspecting that this might be the reason their prayers failed to free the possessed. Peter's confession, that Esperanza is his flesh and blood, leaves Michael perturbed. He grimly informs Peter that Balban's grip is now unbreakable, making saving the orphans and Esperanza a near impossible task. Desperate, Peter pleads with Michael to attempt the exorcism, but Michael drops a bombshell. In a past endeavor to save a child's life, he struck a grievous pact with Balban, trading his own soul. This revelation becomes his last as he succumbs to his fate soon after, but not before cautioning Peter against making any deals with the malevolent entity. The brief respite ends abruptly as the frenzied possessed inmates breach their sanctuary. Against all odds, Peter narrowly evades capture, finding refuge in another room. In a moment of reflection, he records a heartfelt confession about his past transgression with Magali, sealing it in a video message sent to Balducci. Emerging defiantly, Peter is immediately confronted by the possessed inmates. He manages to fend off three attacking women with fervent recitations of prayers. Just as he seems to gain the upper hand, the sinister apparition of Jesus bearing a cross materializes, aiming to overpower him. Peter, resolute and unyielding, manages to halt the advance with his faith-infused chants. But in a sudden twist, a possessed woman strikes him from behind, rendering him unconscious. Regaining consciousness, a grim tableau awaits. Peter is bound to a chair with Esperanza, now an avatar of Balban, set to perform an unholy rite, a perverse exorcism to rip the presence of God from within him. As Esperanza's chants build in intensity, Peter's anguish is palpable, yet with steadfast belief he starts a counter-chant, causing Balban to struggle. Simultaneously, in a hospital, the malicious form of Mother Mary pursues Camilla, with the orphans in her malevolent sights. The narrative returns to the prison, where the showdown reaches its climax. Peter's powerful prayers incapacitate Balban, who, sensing potential defeat, strikes a deal. If Peter willingly severs his bond with God, Balban promises to release his grip on Esperanza and the children. 
Faced with this agonizing decision, Peter acquiesces. After the ordeal, a relieved Peter reunites Esperanza with Magali. The subsequent scenes reveal him basking in adulation, credited with saving over a hundred children. Bishop Balducci commends Peter, discreetly mentioning the deletion of his damning confession and ensures its secrecy. In a show of trust, he offers Peter a prestigious role in the Vatican. As the moment unfolds, both Esperanza and Camilla seek Peter's blessings, signifying a return to normalcy. However, the narrative takes one final sinister twist. The truth unfurls. Peter is now a vessel for Balban, and Balducci, it appears, is ensnared in this dark puppetry. The final frames capture Peter, en route to the Vatican, echoing a chilling proclamation. The infernal forces seek not just heaven, but dominion over earth. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next recap.